I don't want to strike, but I will. Hello, everyone. Today marks the day that CSU faculty will begin to vote as to whether or not they will go on strike. Um, and I just want to tell my story as to why I am voting um, for the possibility of a strike. I'd rather not do it, but I will. Um, and this is really a Black Lives Matter story, so I'm going to be looking at my notes a little bit um, because like a professor, I, I had to get some stats in order to back up what I'm saying and, and, and uh, um, give some rationale as to why I would even consider striking. Um, and I'll start here. You ever wonder why there aren't more black professors in the USA or here specifically at the CSU? And I wonder why I'm still here sometimes. And here's some generational wealth stats. According to the Pew Research Institute, black wealth during the 2010 to 2013 um, years dropped comparatively while white wealth increased by 9%. White wealth is 13 times that of black wealth and 10 times that of Latino wealth. Um, and as there was an increase in white wealth um, coming out of the uh, housing bubble and the recession, there was a still a decrease in black wealth. And it was likely because white folks had more savings. They had generational wealth to pass on a home or some other types of savings when their elders passed away. Whereas black folks, you know, as the song says, and Papa was a Rolling Stone, all they may be able to leave is a loan or maybe nothing at all um, other than good memories. So, yeah. Here's one of the interesting issues. California State University doctoral programs and other programs such as USC and UCLA are graduating black doctorates at high rates in the field of education, yet many of the black professors cannot afford the privilege of working at the CSU. I can barely afford working here as I mentioned some of those issues, but one of the main issues is student loan debt. Um, I took a $30,000 pay cut to come work at the CSU. I made more money as a school psychologist in two days a week um, than I do as a professor. So when my students graduate, the first day on the job, they're making more money than I am um, as their professor. Um, I, can, I attended community college here in California um, in order to keep costs down and then I went away to a historically black college in order to have a transfer rate to have me done within four years. Um, and then I came back home and attended um, SDSU um, for my master's program, um, another Cal State. And I was able to um, pay off those loans. And then eventually I had the opportunity to teach and I wanted to do it full time because I gained a great deal of not just satisfaction, but I, I felt this was part of my purpose and calling to be able to teach the next generation of school psychologists. Um, and I've been able to do that. But it's come at a cost. I took a $30,000 pay cut. And that $30,000 pay cut I thought would be supplemented somewhat by incremental increases. Um, that they showed me when I was applying for the position, but that didn't quite pan out due to the housing bubble burst. So I haven't had a significant raise over 1% in the seven to eight years since I've been here. Um, and I was also promised the opportunity to be able to teach summer school, and I was only be able to do that about four out of the seven years that I've been here. Um, actually, only three out of the seven years since I've been here, four out of those years, I, I really, there's no follow through on that particular promise. Um, so, that said, I also got into credit card debt because you have to travel. And in order to talk with people who might be journal editors or people who are going to publish your research, and I don't know of any tenured professor who hasn't traveled out of the state or sometimes even out of the country in, before they earn tenure. Um, it's just a necessary part of life. But there was a period where they only funded us about $500 a year. And for those of you that know, that barely covers your conference fees and your hotel costs. And that's for one trip. Now, I'm a involved in my state psychological association as well as the national school psychology association um, and I'm only I have to kind of choose in between one or um, those per year um, so I took a second job in order to get out of credit card debt 
and that has been a challenge um, and it's kept me away from my students um, here on campus whether those undergraduates that I advise in the Black Student Union or those of my school psychology students, but I've still tried my best to be available. Even my all my student evaluations say I'm available most often, except the years where I had to go off and work and make sure I got out of debt. I don't want to be in any more debt than necessary because I have two kids who I'd like to be able to send to college, whether it's a CSU or a historically black college, but I want to be able to send them to school without incurring the same type of debt. So they feel free to speak out and to do what they need to do in order to support their families one day. Um, so yeah, that's my story. That's why I'm going on strike. Because a 2% increase after seven years of no um, salary increase is too tiny, uh, Tim. It's too tiny, Tim. <laughs> and that's Chancellor Tim White, for those of you that may not know about the CSU system. Um, we're asking for 5%. We're fighting for 5%. Simply fighting for 5%, which I should have already had. So I'm Brandon Gamble. That's my story. Um, check me out online at drbrandongamble.com. And you'll see my new business because I had to give myself a raise. Peace.